This is Sung, and I want to welcome you to the final episode in the two-unit course, um, in the final topic, for the final topic. And this is the final episode of the final topic, Applications of Calculus to the Physical World. And as always, what a, what a great way to finish off by doing a summary episode of what we did in this topic. All right, basically go through with you a summary of all the concepts that we did in the application of calculus to the physical world topic. And remember how I said that in this particular topic, there's no new maths that we really need to encounter, all right, that we encountered here. There was no really new maths, all right. What instead what this topic was, was an opportunity to use all the maths that we had learned previously and apply it to real life situations, all right? So there will be plenty of word problems um, with their own um, specific situations in which we need to apply calculus to, um, to understand uh, what those situations are, okay? And we got to see that calculus was applicable everywhere. Um, uh, but let's look at some of the concepts that govern where calculus and how calculus is used in the real world. So we started off with rates of change and we looked at what a rate of change actually was. And the rate of change in a number plane, in a sterile number plane, is really just the gradient of the tangent of a curve. It tells us um, the change in y over the change in x for a really minute increment of x and y, okay? So, basically the derivative dy dx was just an extension of gradient, change in y over change in x. And we got to see that when we apply rates of change to uh, real life examples, instead of using the number plane y and x, like arbitrary um, variables y and x, we got to actually use it for specific quantities, right? for different types of quantities. So for example, volume over time, volume uh, over area. Okay, So we got to see that a rate of change really does apply when measuring things out, uh, measuring rates of change out in the physical world. Okay, so we started off with rates of change. Then we moved on to growth and decay. And we got to see that when things grow and when things decay in the physical world, they often do so in a way that is proportional to the quantity at that given point in time. Okay, so the rate of growth or the rate of decay will be proportional by some constant K will be proportional to the quantity of the thing that's growing or decaying, okay? And we've got to see that when something grows or decays in that fashion, right, what it is, is an exponential graph in disguise or an exponential function in disguise. Because essentially, what growth and decay does is grow and decay in an exponential fashion. All right, exponential growth and decay is what we call it, okay? And basically, where your constant is positive, you've got growth. Where your constant is negative, you've got decay. For an exponential um, function that represents the function for growth and decay, A ends up being the initial quantity, T ends up being time, and N is the quantity or the amount at any specific point in time. And what we got to see is that when you've given a rate of change that's proportional to the quantity, you can immediately go to the exponential of uh, the, the rule that allows us to get um, the derivative and vice versa, okay? So we've got to look at growth and decay and do some two, two typical sort of examples of questions that might be asked on growth and decay. The next thing we did was we got to look at motion. We've got to look at how motion is really just rates of change of position or displacement with respect to time at various levels, okay? So we've got to see motion as, um, or position or displacement um, in motion, all right? We've got to see that the rate of change of position or 
or displacement over time is velocity, all right, expressed in Newtonian ways as x dot or dx dt in Leibniz notation. And that acceleration is the second derivative of displacement. And you can express that in Newtonian way or Leibniz way uh, of which Newtonian's method, uh, Newtonian's notation is probably more largely accepted. Okay, and then you, we also got to see that velocity, uh, so that acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Okay, and we got to see that in order to go from mo motion to velocity, vo velocity to acceleration, you differentiate. Okay, and you got to see that the reverse. Uh, Going working the other way requires the reverse process, which is integration. All right, so you to go from acceleration to velocity, you integrate. Um, to go from velocity to displacement, you integrate, and to go from acceleration to displacement, you integrate twice. Got it? Okay, so we got to see that, and then the final thing that we ended up with after we did questions on motion in that regard was look at other interesting motion graphs. And we got to see that they're not just linear quadratic cubic, right? We got to see that motion graphs can also take on interesting forms. They can take on trigonometric form, exponential form, and hyperbolic form. And by looking at those graphs for motion, um, we were able to apply techniques of calculus that we had seen before in other units. So, for example, we got to see uh, how to work out the maximum minimum, all right, by looking at the stationary points and the turning points. We got to look at, um, for example, um, the the tangent uh, representing um, the rate of change. Yeah, and we got to see, also got to see limits and and asymptotes and how they work, in, especially in relation to exponential and hyperbolic functions, yeah? So wrapping all of that up, okay, we got to see those three areas, yeah? We got to see rates of change, growth of decay, and motion being applied, or calculus being applied to those three areas, and essentially, none of the calculus was brand new. None of the, the, the mathematics was brand new. We just got to see how they applied to different real life examples, yeah? so. Thank you very much for watching. I really, really hope that you've gotten something out of watching all the videos that we put together. Let us know what you thought, because if you really did enjoy it, we would love to continue making more of these, uh, these videos for you, okay? God bless you. Thank you for watching, and good luck with the HSC. We wish you all the very best success. Thanks. Bye.